why? <laughs> what? Why? Why? Why is this a thing? <laughs> why? Is this? No, this isn't. This isn't April first. This is May. No, J June. This is June. We're in June now. June third. Holy crap! I, I, a magic eight ball. Why? Why a magic eight ball movie? Hello, everyone. I am Mecha Random Forty Two, your favorite YouTube harpy. Bloomhouse apparently is turning Mattel's Magic Eight Ball into a movie. Coming to coming to us from uh, the movie website from B. Allen Orange here. I. I'm, all right, I'm, I'm kind of speechless as to, well, hey, they, they, it looks like they just took a photo of a magic eight ball wherever they wrote this, which is cool, which is cool. Or, or I, I mean, I don't know if they grabbed one offline and, and took a picture of it, but you can see their reflection. <laughs> that was the first thing I noticed. Um, it's a magic eight ball. I mean, I guess it could be like a Ouija board movie where, you know, it'll just say demonic things. I mean, if anything, it would work best as a horror movie. Uh, I, I, yeah, you know what? It, screw it. It might be good. It might be good. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Remember the Magic 8 Ball. It's becoming a movie at Bloomhouse. Is it Bloomhouse or Blumhouse? I always say Bloomhouse. The wildly popular Mattel toy will get a live action adaptation with Truth or Dare and Fantasy Island director Jeff Wadlow. Wadlow. I can't pronounce them what names. Already set to write and direct the thriller. Well, you know what? Yeah, why not? Why not? It's not a remake of something, at least. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, if, if it turns into a remake of kind of Ouija, maybe, I, I, if, if anything, it's, it's, it makes more sense than Battleship. I'll tell you that much. It does make more sense than Battleship. Oh my god. You know, now that I think about it, you could do a lot with that. You could really do a lot with that. I mean, I have, I have Magic 8 Ball sort of apps on my tablet just for fun, you know? Oh lord, this, this, but why do it, is there really enough to put into a movie though? That's the thing, is there enough to put into a movie? Jeff Wadlow will be collaborating on the script with his team of writers that include Jillian Jacobs and Chris Roach. The movie will mark Mattel's first foray into independent filmmaking. Mattel's films, uh, Mattel films Robbie Brenner had this to say, Since the 50s, Magic 8-Ball has inspired imagination, suspense, and intrigue across generations. This iconic toy has built, has a built-in connection with the fans and untapped potential for storytelling. There are no partners better suited to tell the Magic 8-Ball story in collaboration with Mattel films than Jeff Wadlow and Bloomhouse Productions, whose unique approach to their thriller genre has captivated audiences worldwide and gained widespread accolades. A? Yeah, yeah, I think you guys are right. I think you guys have probably found the best option and make it a horror movie, sure. I mean, why not? If they if they if they can do the uh, sort of horror remake of the banana freaking splits, then yes, why not? But I I, I mean there's two things here, though. Yes, one, it does work probably best as a horror movie, in my opinion, but I'm a horror fan anyway. And and two, Bloomhouse is going to be like a super low budget thing. This thing will turn a profit. This will make money. They'll probably only give it a, a budget of like a couple of million dollars. <laughs> and and it'll, it'll make its money back and then some, and it'll scare a bunch of kids in October, whatever this release is. Well, I'm, I'm assuming this is probably an October 20, 2020 project, maybe. 2021, maybe. Bloomhouse founder Jason Bloom went on to say this about the horror thriller. As fans of Mattel and their iconic brand, we're looking forward to bringing Magic 8-Ball, one of their most celebrated toys, to life and playing against expectations in doing so. We look forward to partnering with Mattel Films to put this project on the fast track to the big screen and create a memorable experience for moviegoers. Well, we have heard that Mattel is throwing their hat into the ring with their own, th their own filmmaking, and I guess this is it. I guess this is it. So... <laughs> Mattel Films now has six movies in the planning stages with various studios around Hollywood. They're currently working on the long gestating bar gestating. That's a good word. That's a good word for it. gestating. <laughs> Barbie movie, a Hot Wheels adventure, Masters of the Universe, American Girl, and a feature film based on the iconic Viewmaster. Viewmaster could work as a Jumanji sort of movie. Oh, too bad. Too bad they couldn't put them in the. Oh, or could they? Could they put them in the same universe? Who owns the Jumanji games? That's probably Parker Brothers or something. I know that they made games after the movie came out. 
And, and here's the thing with the Masters of the Universe one. That's the one that has probably the most potential to have a huge fan base because He-Man. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And it has nothing to do with the new She-Ra. So, so good on you. The Magic 8-Ball is a fortune-telling device. A black pool ball with a die rolling around in a blue inky liquid. When you ask a ball a question and shake it up, the die turns in the liquid and it surfaces, giving the answer. The Magic 8-Ball played a big part in this spring's DC superhero movie, Shazam. That's true. Holy crap, that is true. Magic 8-Ball was not Shazam. I totally forgot about it. That was a good movie. Check it out if you didn't see it. I, I really enjoyed it. It's not the best movie in the world, but it's just fun. It's just fun and good and entertaining. Magic 8-Ball was selected by Time Magazine as one of the 100 greatest toys ever invented. Bloomhouse will follow its standard practice of creating a movie on a low budget, yielding a high box office. This pack, past weekend, they released Ma, which made which was made for a $5 million budget and scored an $18 million debut, already making it a big financial success. And that's... That is one of the things that I keep kind of ranting about in Hollywood lately, is that... We don't have a lot of lower budget movies, you know? We don't have a lot of these sort of B and even C level budget movies. Everything, they're trying to make everything this billion dollar franchise, cinematic universe. And you know, sometimes, sometimes movies are niches, you know? Horror is a niche of a niche. Nostalgic horror, especially, is a niche of a niche, and and this this can appeal to nostalgia. I don't know. I'm still not entirely sold this will be a good thing, but this probably has the best possible chance of not being terrible, right? Or at least of not being... I'm, I'm more excited for this than Pet Cemetery, <laughs> the Pet Cemetery remake, because I already saw Pet Cemetery. I've never seen what you guys do with an eight ball. This sounds like something like a B-movie from the 80s. And I love the B-horror movies from the 80s, especially if they're funny. Oh my god, those are some of my favorite movies of all time. Jeff Wadlow made his Bloom House hit Truth or Dare for just $3.5 million, and the movie scored an amazing $95 million at the box office. So there's definitely a method behind this madness. Previous to this latest announcement, John Gunn and John Mann were developing a script for a Magic 8-Ball movie at Paramount that didn't end up going anywhere. Oh, gee. Hmm. Hopefully, hopefully none of the Hollywood shenanigans went on. And you know how, how you'll... You know, I, I've, heard, I've heard many stories of this where people will turn in a script for something and be like, hey, I'm working on a script. Can, do, do you have any interest in this? And then the Hollywood will be like, hmm, we're working on something just like that. Steel pocket. And, and just kind of rework a little bit, but it'll be the same damn thing, right? But we see this time and time again in Hollywood. Don, uh, the, the volcano movies, what was it, Dante's Inferno, and, and yeah, all, all the, or the <laughs> Deep Impact Armageddon. You know, we always have kind of the same type of, well, always have ants in a bug's life. We always have that sort of thing. So if we see some other sort of, what other fortune-telling device? Well, we already have a Ouija board movie, <laughs> and it's not really a fortune-telling device, but... <laughs> This isn't Blumhouse's first foray into the world of toys. In 2015, they released a live action. Don't trigger me. Don't trigger me by mentioning that. Gem and the Holograms based. No, it was based on nothing. It was based on somebody had a script of a YouTube singer with a, who played guitar. And then they said, what What do we have that's similar? Oh, we have. Also, thank you for subscribing. Oh, we have. We have. Gem and the Holograms, this sort of musical, it has nothing to do with YouTube or a girl being famous on YouTube, but no, we have, we have, we have Gem and the Holograms, no, and that, that's a trigger for me, because that movie was so, I should, I should have started talking about entertainment then, I really should have. It was one of Blue House's rare misfires and actually bombed big time, rolling only two million off a of five million budget, so these things don't always work out, this news comes from Deadline. So here, here's the thing though. The Gem of the Holograms movie was something that you had a built-in fan base for. You pissed off the built-in fan base by making it something that it wasn't. There, there's no TV show based on a Magic 8-Ball. There's nothing you could really mess up on this one, I don't think. This couldn't be the worst thing that they've ever done. And, you know, it's, it's totally an unnecessary movie. But, hey, they might make it fun. They might make it a good popcorn movie, right? They might make it something that's like... This, something that's like... Just, just a dumb, fun, entertaining... Like, like Something like Rampage last year. That was dumb and fun, even though that was a huge budget. But that was another stupid movie. It was based on a video game. And that was actually really fun and stupid and good. So you, you never know with these movies. <laughs> anyway, I am Mecha Random 42 P.O. Box 1566, Loveland, Colorado, 80539. I do unbox anything you guys send me in the P.O. Box on live streams usually. And I've been 
really, really, really super backlogged about getting all of the, the videos um, edited together and put up that are the unboxing little segments. So I apologize for that, but they will be up eventually sometime, hopefully. And as always, tell me what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will see you on the next video, live stream, on Midnight's Edge After Dark, or on Creepy Little Book. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video!